at the end this is not really improving your production that much that it's worth it to do it different places different worlds nothing left just empty words back for breath barely touch nothing ever is enough Hey guys, I'm finally almost back at the studio. It's getting colder every day, but thanks to my new beanie, I'm all safe. Today I wanted to address something that a lot of young producers just make wrong because they're watching too many tutorials and just copy what other people do. The three main problems I usually see have to do with compressing, with layering sounds and also routing sounds through buses. And of course, never ever wear a beanie while producing. It's just impossible to mix with something on top of your ears, except when you're a Vici. So let's just start with layering sounds. It can be super important in certain styles of music, but a lot of young producers just see in these tutorials, producers making layered sounds by just stacking synth sounds. And this can help the sound and improve it but they usually don't see that the main sound is already pretty good it's like 80 90 percent there where it should be and then it's layered with maybe a very tiny top sound to give it more attack or to make it a bit wider or just to give it a bit more character put a bit of distortion on top of it and these kind of things i see in a lot of productions from from beginners they just put random synthy sounds on top and it just sounds horrible. It just clutters up your mix. It will be impossible to get the mix right with so many elements on top. And if you don't EQ them correctly, it will get even worse. In all of my own productions, I keep the layering down to a minimum. I only do it when it's really necessary. I think the last time I did it was on my last track, Shadows of You, in one of the guitar parts. Let me just show it to you and tell you why I did it. I have right here the chorus part with the drums, the bass, the lead guitar, the lead vocals. And right after it is a part where the lead vocals are missing and instead I'm introducing a synthy sound that is layering the guitar. Let me play it to you. So actually this guitar sound right here is getting layered with this synthy sound. a couple of reasons why I layered the guitar first of all with the synthy on top I have something that I can automate and give this entire track an uplifting vibe to the end of this part and have a nice transition to the next one the guitar gets a bit more interesting a little bit more attack I put a lot more effects onto the synthy sound and in this part the vocals are missing so the synth on top is kind of replacing them and making this part complete again. As you can see, layering can be useful if you use it correctly and not overdo it. If you have a synthy sound that you're not satisfied with it, don't ever put another synthy sound on top trying to improve it. This won't change anything. This will just make it worse, will make it harder to mix and harder to find mistakes and correct them. If you're not satisfied with your synthy sound, just go back to the synthy and to the effects and try changing it there. The next one is routing elements through buses. And I know in a lot of tutorials, you will see producers doing that and telling you about how important it is, but it actually doesn't really change the sound that much. It's like not even the last percent, it's not important. And if you get confused where you have rooted what, it's probably better to just not root things and stick to a very linear production which will make it easier for you to find the elements and to know what's going on. The second you get confused with it, just leave it. It's not improving your sound 
that much it might even not improve it at all just as an example my own production again as you can see all of these main sounds they go just straight to the stereo output and here in the drums i have a couple that go to bus number two that's my drum bus where i sum up all of the drum sounds and bus number one is actually just there for the side chaining i don't have any other buses where i group things I only have here buses for the effects, but that's something different. That I'm bussing the drums has actually just to do with me using a guise for all of my drums. You see here the separate channels where you have the kick, the clap and the hi-hats. And all of these are routed through separate buses so that I can individually do things with them here in Logic and EQ them and put reverb on top. And then they're all rooted back into one bus just that I can change the volume on all of the drums at once. This also gives me the possibility to parallel compress the drums. On this track I actually turned it off because it was sounding better without it. I sometimes use this parallel compression just to make the drums sound more together. Especially when I use them from different sample packs. But as I said here, it wasn't really necessary. So at the end, busing is really helpful if you want to save CPU power or if you want to apply the same effect onto a lot of tracks. For example, if you have like six, seven vocal tracks and all of them should get the same effect, it totally makes sense to group them and just apply the effects once. And also if you change the vocals, the effects are still in place. If you put compression onto a bus with a lot of elements, this will totally sound different because the compressor is reacting differently if you have just one element feeding it or a lot. Keep that in mind when grouping things. Next up is compression. I will talk about it a bit later. I now have to start working on the beginning of the end track. I want to finish it before the weekend. I also have to take care of a lot of business stuff that have to do with the release of the rising track on Friday as well as some things that have to do with the upcoming remix contest. Advancing really good on this new track, can't wait to share it with you and show you how I've made it. But now it's almost 7 again, a good friend is coming, picking me up from the studio, we have to talk about some business things and yeah. I have a rare guest, Oliver. We know each other already from kindergarten. From kindergarten, I think so. Yeah, really long, long, time, long ago. time ago. <laughs> and we have to discuss a couple of business things and then some fun stuff. Yes, of course. Okay, all done with the business stuff. I will continue talking about the compression part at the end of this video. Oliver is already waiting downstairs in his car. Oliver has a really cool new car. What is it? Audi? Audi um, A5. A5. So we have to test it a little bit. German Autobahn? Yes, of course. But uh, first, the first trip go to Bauhaus. Muss noch Gegenverkehr gucken. Illegal driving. 30 is allowed. It's a one way street. We're driving in the opposite direction with almost 50. It's a really, really, really nice car. How proud are you of your new car? Very proud. I love it. How do you like my new head? Then it's not I'm just here to get one last piece for this camera setup before it's finally perfect. I got all of the stuff that I need. Now it's time to find Oliver again in this really big DIY store. Yeah, okay. It's now about time to test the new car. First time autobahn with this one? Yes. Okay, so let's give it a speed test. It's unfortunately rush hour, so we won't be able to do what's so special about the German autobahn and drive as fast as we want to. There is no speed limit in Germany. 140, but there's way too much traffic in front of us. Finally found a spot where it's free to drive as fast as you want to. There are not a lot left around the city. We're now at 180. 200? Yes, 200. 200. Looks super fast. Two 
220 and emergency brake. That's what nobody tells you about the German Autobahn. It's so dense you actually can't go that fast. This idiot made us break at 220. We're now back to 160. And there's the next idiot ahead and now it's free again. 200 again. It feels very smooth at 200, huh? It's, it's a good German car. Smooth car. Now there's no one ahead. Um, 220. It's fast. <laughs> it's hard to capture with the camera how fast it actually is. Vielen Dank für die Spritztour. Ich danke, dass du gekommen bist. Ciao. This was a lot of fun. I think we have to repeat it. With at least 10 GoPros attached to the car, this would be a whole lot of fun. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is compression. A lot of producers overuse it, I think, especially in electronic music. You have to consider that all of the samples were already compressed, mastered, reused a couple of times. And also the synths usually have effects on top, sometimes compression or there are some special things hidden in the Sinti and the programming of it that already compress the sounds a little bit. And you have always to think compression at the end is just raising the sounds that are a little bit lower than the others, making everything more equal. On vocals, it totally makes sense. But on Sinti sounds, not really a whole lot. And just compressing and compressing doesn't make the track better. It just reduces the dynamic range and might even hurt the track more than it benefits from it. My hair looks super weird. <laughs> I think it's the same as with the other two techniques. If you use it wisely in the right amount and at the right spot, your production can benefit from it. But when you're just starting out to produce, don't really worry about these techniques. Just try to make a balanced mix, use good elements, search for the right samples, the right sounds put them at the right place and you will have a better mix than trying one of these three. But nobody will talk about how he searched for the right kick for hours or for the right synthy sound. That's just boring and for a producer that is doing it for years, that's like common sense. He's doing it on a daily basis. They like more to talk about the fancier stuff that they're doing to their production and the stuff that they learned new. And that's sometimes not the best for somebody that's just starting out. I'm really wondering where Vanessa is. It's now 8.30 and still no sign of her. <music> Poor girl has to work really long today. She will be back in half an hour and she requested my special John Sign pizza, which tastes really good, but the kitchen looks like a mess when I'm done. But her choice. Lack of light, lack of light on the shelf where you don't dust.